Now listen to this. Listen to this. Mr. Dida, the Muslims believe this categorical Quranic statement for, for to be from God. Hence, he asks no questions and seeks no proof. That's Islam in a nutshell. Christ crucified, hoax or history. No doubt it sounds prerogative, but it is a borrowed title from the Christian's own extravagances, from his own vocabulary. So he's asking us to call our witnesses. I'm calling the witnesses. Our subject is what is the gospel yes fantastic and in doing that I want to do a bit of a structure hopefully in yes. that in answering the question I want to look at what the Old Testament says yes. the Old Covenant and I want to so the prophets the Old Testament and then I want to look to, so that's the um, Torah yeah and the Tanakh and then I want to look at the New Testament what Jesus himself said and then also in the New Testament what the eyewitnesses who are the disciples and apostles and why this subject just let me say very briefly because the gospel is the reason why we're down here yes certainly that's the reason why we're here the reason why we're here not particularly to engage with Muslims for the sake of engaging with Muslims but to engage with them for the purpose of presenting the gospel yes and the gospel is independent of any other religion that is to say it doesn't rely on them if there were no religions in the world the gospel still need to be preached it's not dependent on calling someone from another religion, whether you're calling them from another religion or none, the gospel is still present. Yes. Unlike Islam, which is built on conflict and confusion, the Bible and the Christian faith is not. Islam came into existence to confuse and to conflict with what had previously gone ahead. It turns all the key Christian doctrines and biblical doctrines on its head. Angel Gabriel came to Mary, announced the birth of Jesus. Islam said not so, in a nutshell. Bible said Jesus is the son of God, Islam says not so. Bible said Jesus is God in human form, Islam said not so. It reminds me of what Paul said, even if an angel from heaven. So imagine that, so Paul is saying, even if we change our mind, I'm qualifying what I said, because I'm saying that Islam came into existence for conflict and confusion. Right, without further ado, let's get into it. So we're asking a question, what is the gospel? And to be clear, and to make no beef, I'm going to answer the question. It's not a question that hangs there as in to say there's no real answer. There is an answer. So I pose it as a question, or if you want even a rhetorical question, as in I'm going to ask the question and then answer it. <laughs> so let's firstly go to Isaiah, if you can. Go to Isaiah 53, and I just want you to read verses 1 to 12. So we're going to look at three stages, as I said, to be clear. What the Old Testament says, the Torah and the Tanakh, and then in the New Testament, what Jesus himself said, some of the things we're going to look at, and what the disciples, the gospel, the message that the disciples and apostles preach. So Isaiah 53, verse 1 to 12. Who has believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem, esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted <coughs> but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. All we are like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He has taken from prison and judgment, and he and who shall declare his generation Amen. for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people <laughs> was he stricken and he was made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him he has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the travail of his soul 
and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he hath numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession of the transgressors. Two more very quickly. You know, sometimes we need to sort of say, just two more very quickly. Okay. 61, Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2, and then Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. 61 the question verses is, what one is the and gospel? Two. And I'm saying the gospel is here. Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. This is the gospel being this, pronounced beforehand. So this is the gospel being pronounced. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, mm. to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Amen. Okay. Amen. Right, one more. 9 verse 6 and 7. Is that Isaiah chapter yes, 9? Yes, Isaiah chapter 9, 6 and 7. This is the gospel announced beforehand. So the gospel is in the Old Testament. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's the title of yes. Jesus. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice Thank from you. henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Amen. Right. So that's the gospel beforehand in the Old Testament and that's the whole point. Now I want to quickly, I'm going to carry on doing what I'm doing but it's very important at this point that I bring out Amadi that's book. Yes. So we're going to carry on to be sure, we're not diverting, I'm going to carry on. But Amadi that asked a very si a question. Well I wouldn't say it's serious but he asked a question anyway. I'm going to read firstly 40457 and Mr D that's presented in, in the book so I don't think I need to. Good. Yes. So Sura 457 in carrying on. It says, and they said in boast we killed Christ. Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God, but they killed him not. Now, Mr. D that made a very interesting question. He said this, had the Christians, he said this, could anyone have been more explicit, more emphatic, Mr. D that says, more dogmatic, more uncompromising in rejecting the dogma of a faith than this? Impossible is the answer. The only one who would be the all-knowing, the omniscient, the omnipotent Lord of the universe, God Almighty himself. Now listen to this, listen to this, Mr. Dida, the Muslims believe this categorical Quranic statement for, for to be from God, hence he asks no questions and seeks no proof. That's Islam in a nutshell. They want no, they ask no questions and they seek no proof for the biggest historical light in history. And they said in both, we killed him not. They killed Christ not. Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God. Immediately, after shamelessly and barefacedly saying he doesn't want any, doesn't ask any questions or any proof, he immediately sets a challenge. After saying he doesn't ask any questions or seek any proof, he does, however, seek such from the Christian. On his next page, he says, Call your witnesses. And that's what I want to do. Okay, call our witnesses. Yes, he wants us to call our witnesses. Just let me read a bit more. In trying to prove their dogmas, they invent shocking statements and posters one of which has been used as the title of this book. So basically, he nicked the title of this book, in other words, Christ Crucified, Hoax or History. No doubt it sounds provocative, but it is a borrowed title from the Christian's own extravagances, from his own vocabulary. So he's asking us to call our witnesses. I'm calling the witnesses. The whole Bible is a witness to the testimony of Jesus. And that's why I wanted to look at, sometimes we can just go to the apostles, but I'm saying before Jesus even came to earth, the Old Testament was a witness. The prophets were witnesses. When we get to the New Testament, Jesus himself was a witness to his own death and resurrection. And then the disciples and the apostles afterwards, independent of Paul, and we're going to look at that as well. Of Paul. The gospel is clear in the Old Testament. And Can when I we catch get to you the New Testament, before you move on, on. brother, hmm? Paul is actually in the Quran. Yes. Paulus, and he's actually yeah, right. one of the yeah. uh, I just heroes of the Quran, which is quite that. strange mm. that Muslims are going against Paulus. Mm. So I'm glad you said that because some of the eyewitnesses, let's mention some of them because we can, I keep saying this, we can put aside the Bible and we can put aside the Quran and we have evidence for the eyewitnesses. Josephus is one of them. Oh yes, Josephus. Roman Tacitus is another evidence. These are ancient writers, historians and poets, some of them. 
So we got Josephus, Flavius Josephus, we got um, Cornelius Tacitus, we got a guy called Phallus, we got a guy called Lucian, and we got the Babylonian Talmud. Lots of evidence. Can we just talk yes. about Josephus for a few yes. seconds? Yes. He actually tabled the he um, recorded the destruction of yes. the temple. Yes. So we know that he has a historical narrative, mm. and, the, and it was one of the one, most one-sided Roman battles. If anyone that's into military history, like yes. myself. And um, Josephus, the yes, wars. Uh, Josephus recorded this, so we know at that time that he recorded a lot of what went on in the history of the yes, Roman Empire. Yes, he does remember a title. What is the gospel? Yes, what is and, the gospel? And bear in mind at Medi that challenge, which I intend to meet. Call your witnesses. Call your Even witnesses. though he shamelessly and barefacedly said that he has none and he doesn't want any. However, he's asking us to call us, are happy to do. And, and I'm we've saying already again, called the historians. Yes, that's one. Yes, that's that right, valid. that's one. I'm yeah. saying that the whole Bible is there. Let me give you an yes. example. Not Isaiah has been yes. a witness. Yes, Isaiah is a witness. 700 years ahead. That's right, Isaiah is a yes. witness. We'll find that Jeremiah is a witness also, okay. which we might get into. Zechariah is a witness. Okay. The prophet Moses is a witness. Yes. These are the witnesses. witnesses. Isaiah 42, yeah. Deuteronomy 18. Isaiah 45, various places are witnesses in the Old Testament before Jesus comes. So ahead of Jesus, because when you talk about testimony or eyewitnesses, it's ahead of time. You know testimony and eyewitnesses usually before the time. The testimony and eyewitness is ahead of time. And then when we get to the New Testament, Jesus is his own eyewitness. Now we're looking at what is the gospel. Now Jesus comes into town preaching the gospel. Let's see what's going on. Matthew chapter 4, Four verse verses 17. 7. Yeah. Jesus said start on, from, sorry, start sorry. from verse 14. Though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, Matthew chapter 4, verse 14. Verse 14, yeah. sorry. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Amen. Uh, to what verse should I read up to? 17. 17. Yeah. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light has sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven Amen. is at hand. Repent. Repent. Amen. Right, yes. Go again, Mark 1, 5, Mark chapter 1, verse 15 to 20. This is the gospel. And for those of you that are not Mark familiar with gospel. Mark, it goes straight in. It's yes. one of the gospels. That yes. It's a very good one. Yes. And saying that this time is fulfilled, that the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now, at... Sorry, now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting the net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Already, what have we seen? Let's be clear. So already we, 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 we mentioned the um, non-biblical sources, yes. the Josephus, the Roman Catholic, and then we looked at some gospel in Isaiah 53. Yes. So this is beforehand. So here is the gospel being pronounced, yeah, yes. ahead of time. But you're that's saying right. that's yes. not actually the gospel. Yeah. That is a prophecy yeah, yeah, coming yeah, to yeah, fulfillment. No, no, yeah, a prophecy, yeah, of course, yeah, of course it is. Yeah. But remember in Isaiah 53, that's the, that's the crucifixion. Oh yes, that's, that's the crucifixion, buried, yes, remember? Yes, yes. And being buried with the rich that Josephus has taken his body. Yes. So ahead of time, God was telling us what was going to go. We have to give praise to our yeah, Lord Jesus Christ because that crucifixion yeah. has brought yes, our salvation. Yes. Yes. And that detail, that's actually quite detailed in Isaiah 53. You can find oh. all of that in Matthew 27 specifically. Matthew 27. You know, yeah. so. And then Josephus turning up and remember asking for the body of Jesus. So I'm saying the testimony of Jesus is the whole gospel, all of it. It's the prophecies in the Old Testament. Yeah, it's when we get into the New Testament, it's what Jesus said himself, which we get to look at. Yes. It's what the disciples have said, but it's also the whole Roman Empire. Remember, the, the eyewitnesses were there at the cross, the women were there, the Roman soldiers were there, Pilate was there, the Pharisees were there, the Sadducees were there, the chief priests were there. These are witnesses. Okay, the so the chief priests. Yeah. Now, going back to the Amadida. So Amadida yeah. said, where are yeah. your witnesses? He said, where are your witnesses? I think you provided more yes, than a court provided, of law with right. you. Yeah, yes. that's right. I provided more than enough witnesses. I provided more than enough witnesses. So, and now, and so, and so now, what happened? We've got a 600 year gap, yeah, in the gospel, and then Islam comes on the scene, okay. turns everything on its head. Yes. That's the key point I'm making. Yes. We're getting an angel from heaven preaching another gospel, another gospel. that Paul talked about. Okay, so ahead of time again, one. we've been warned for what's coming. You said an angel from heaven, mm. but it says also in the Bible, mm. sometimes Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Of so that angel bringing this wrong um, scripture mm. could have been Satan himself. Yes, of course it could. And 
we know that um, angels don't have 600 wings because we have no account in the Bible of an angel being as high as a heaven. And we also know that this angel took him to the seven heavens and Moses told them to bow to a carver stone. Now, we don't believe Moses did that because Leviticus 26 verse 1 says don't bow to a stone. Mm. So we can challenge that narration yes. of an angel yes. that squeezed him and tried to strangle him yes. or probably was in WWE yes. wrestler yes. because I love WWE. Yeah. 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 I wanted to give him a suplex somehow yeah. uh, in some kind of crazy manner and said read mm. when he was yeah. illiterate. Now we can't, I mean it, it's, it baffles me sometimes that you need to really engage your brain mm. and question things and read things as a period. Mm. Uh, so please but let's go carry on with the witnesses. I'm yes. going to go to Matthew 10 again because I want to look at the witnesses now. I'm saying there were eyewitnesses. At Medi that said, call the witnesses. Now I looked at the witnesses in the Old Testament, but now let's look at the direct eyewitnesses. Okay. Let's uh, look at the disciples. Matthew 10, verse 1 to 5. And when he called unto him his 12 disciples, so there we yes, go. That's 12 witnesses. Yes. He gave them the power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the 12 apostles are eyewitnesses. These. These are the eyewitnesses. The first Simon, who was called Peter, Simon Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, yes. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles yes. and into any city of the Samaritans, enter not. Yes. So these are the 12 witnesses that Amadi that said did not exist. Yes. Yeah. I, I just yeah. have to be yeah. bold no, on this. No, that's fine. No, that's fine. That's 12 witnesses. Go again, because we're looking at eyewitnesses. In a court of law, you wouldn't simply just turn people away and say you're not a witness. You'd have to put them to a test. Which verses, sir? Verse 44, Matthew 20, Luke 24, verse oh, 44. Want Luke, not yeah, 24, verse 44 to 49. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. This is Jesus speaking. Yes. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written and thus it is behold, Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Amen. And they and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Ye are witnesses of these things. That's verse 48. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you and tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. But what did Jesus appeal to? That's the key point. I mean, look at the appeal that Jesus made for the authority. The Old Testament, the law of Moses and the Psalms. Eyewitnesses. We are calling Mr. Dina his eyewitnesses. Yes. We're meeting his request. We're He's meeting your request, Mr. Dina. Your book. And what's That's this right. dodgy it's book called, called? Crucifixion or Crucifixion. Yes. As in fiction. So in other words, you're saying the crucifixion was a fiction. Well, we can call this book a fiction yes. because it's... So this book uh, is a fiction. We're, 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 go again with me and then I'll, I'll let you come. Go again with me to Mark 8. I'm still looking at witnesses. Mark 8 verse 31 and Mark 9 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying opening, openly and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savourest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him, which his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. For whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. Amen. Now, I want to ask you okay. this brother because mm -hmm. I know some people are very tricky and mm -hmm. they always look 
What does he say be behind me, Satan? Was he was saying to his disciple that his disciple is Satan? No, he wasn't. No, no, it's because remember, remember what, what was Peter saying? What, what did Peter say? Peter he tried that? to stop Jesus yeah, from going to his crucifixion. Exactly. And what, what, what's the crucial here? That Jesus' purpose was to come to be crucified. Yes, to if die any, for the remission yes, of all our sins. If anybody tries to get to the way, be it direct, be it intentionally or unintentionally. So whether Peter was intentionally doing that or unintentionally doing it, in this case, clearly unintentionally Unintent doing it. Yeah, please it's say still that trying to, yeah. It Peter was unintentional. did this unintentionally. Peter was not evil. He yeah, was a disciple yeah. of the Lord. And he didn't even realize what he was he doing. That's the whole point. Because remember, the context is that he thought he was trying to help Jesus. He thought he was trying to save him. You know why I wanted you to elaborate yes. this? Because yeah. I've been caught up with a yes. lot of Muhammadians yeah, or whatever you want to yeah. call them, Muslims, yeah. that will always twist simple yes, words. Yeah. So we need to sometimes yes, explain things to ensure that the gospel yes. is preserved yes. in and its And what's sanctity. the message in this? Even if you're doing something unintentional and it's wrong, it's against God's will. doesn't matter if there's good intentions in your heart. If it's against God's will or his word, you will be rebuked for it. You will be rebuked. Intentionally or unintentionally. Yes. And the Lord will rebuke. Yes. Just one more for me, 931. Uh, is that uh, Mark yeah, chapter 9? Yeah, Mark 9, 931. So 31. this is Jesus now himself predicting his death and resurrection. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. So to all those Muslim that are, you know, reading Ahmadidat's book with devotion, thinks he's got a case, <laughs> he hasn't got a case. He asked me to call witnesses, I call the witnesses. Now for him to say that the disciples are not witnesses, now let's look at this very legally very briefly now. This is foolhardy for a witness to step forward and you simply say that they are not witnesses. The only time you hear of this in a legal situation actually is when there's corruption. You know, you've heard of cases where policemen and other government agents are turning witnesses away from court doors. Yeah, That's a corrupt evidence. government. Yes. You do not turn away a witness and say you're not a witness before you put them to the or test. like somebody yes. walks into a Saudi embassy yeah, and somehow right. doesn't come yeah. out. Yeah. Like... If I come forward, that's right, exactly. If I come forward as a witness, you've got to test me. You can't simply call me a liar. Let's say there was a murder and I say, I'm a witness. You know, I want to go to court. You can't say you're not a liar. That's the whole point. You've got to test me. What do you know? Yeah. You establish whether I'm telling the truth or whether I'm a liar by exactly. putting me to the test. So what are we on. getting in this as well? We're also getting that, you know when Muslims make that statement that Jesus committed suicide? This is foolhardy. So it was all planned. It was Jesus, all planned. Jesus' purpose was to come and to die and rise from the dead. Yes. I mean, it was all planned. So any suggestion of why did Jesus have to die or did he kill himself or why did God kill his son as though it's in a context of an accident. And when we mean the son of God, yes. uh, uh, to get an understanding, like so, the Quran is very silly, uh, it's very childish. Uh, Allah is not something because he can't be getting the son. Yeah. If, he, if I want to have a son, I would take one of my own kind. So now your God questioning the true God is saying he has his kind. Mm. So what kind is your Allah that he's going to sleep around? So your, that means your Allah can procreate. Mm. Well, yes, your Allah has a wife and daughters, mm. Alat, Al Uzza mm. and Manat. Mm. Don't hide from this. Our God is a one God. Right. We don't believe in three gods. That is your Quran saying this. So we repeat, we believe in one God. It was the spirit of the Lord that became uh, incarnate through the Virgin. And this is specifically saying Emmanuel, God with us. Mm. So Jesus is Lord, is God. We're not, Jesus is not separate from God. He is one with God that's and right. Jesus proclaimed this. So that's right, in the beginning with the word. That's yeah. right, absolutely. So um, so we have it from Jesus' mouth himself. So what have we got so far? Old Testament prophecies, yes. Jesus himself saying, saying it. it. And now let's look at the New Testament. Let's go yes. to Acts 2. Acts so two. Paul is out of the picture here and we're going to see the gospel <laughs> without Paul. Paul. Let's look at the gospel without Paul. Because Actually, let's look at the gospel when Paul was probably still an enemy. Ye men of Israel, hear yeah, these right. words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit up on his throne. He, seeing this death before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Ne neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus has God raised up, wherefore, 
We are witnesses. Witnesses. That's the key I word. witness evidence. Do you want me to continue? No, just read what it concludes. Next verse. Okay. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. So how many witnesses have we got now? Um, we've had the disciples. How many witnesses have we got? Yes. Well, Amadidat has made a bold proclamation that there were no witnesses mm -hmm. to the crucifixion, to the death and the resurrection. We have given many, we've given the disciples, we've given the historical evidence. Um, and as we know, Paul talks about the, the over 500. Over 500. And then he talks about in the 12 and himself. So once we've established that the Old Testament prophecies had beforehand um, announced the gospel, remember? Yes. Remember, interestingly, what Paul said that, that, that um, um, Abraham received the gospel in Galatians 4, I believe, isn't okay, it? Okay, Galatians yeah, read 4. That, yeah, uh, uh, yeah yes. read that bit. Because remember, he said that upon this, um, the gospel was preached before to Abraham. And so because we, Muslims, yeah. I, I like to, yeah. we don't like always cutting in, but mm. Muslims say that Abraham was a Muslim. Yes. He was not a yeah, Muslim. And right. we're going to prove this to you. Our Bible, centuries before yes. you. Uh, uh, Galatians chapter 4, verses yes. what, sir? Um, oh, so it's, it's about verse 15, is it? Uh, uh, Galatians read, chapter 3, verse yeah, 8. Just read what you think and the scripture right. foreseeing that God would justify the heathen That's through right. faith, yes. preached before the gospel unto Amen. Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed Amen. and that blessing is the Lord Jesus Christ right. so then okay. they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham yes. for as many as are the works of law under the curse for yes. it is written cursed is everyone that continueth not, not in all things which are written in the book of the law do them but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God it is evident that yes. The just shall live by faith. And yeah. if you go to Hebrews chapter 11, yeah. it talks about faith. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine hair. So that's Ishmael is not. Mm. But he that come forth that's out right. of thy own bowels shall be in thy heir, meaning right. uh, Isaac. That's right. And brought forth abroad. And it goes to verse 6. And he believed in the Lord, and it was counted in him unto righteousness. And while so, you were there, one more. Go to Jenny, because this ties in as well. The seed. Genesis 17. Read from like um, 17, 17, 17 to 21. To yeah, 17 to 21. Then Abraham yeah. fell upon his face and laughed and said unto his heart, Shall yeah. a child be born yeah. unto him that is an hundred years old, and Sarah that is ninety years old? Mm. And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. So this covenant is with yes. Isaac. Yes. And that is a line of the prophets. That's right. Uh, which even the Quran it's, actually says. Yes, it does. Is a line and of it's the interesting, prophets. there's that verse yes. there that doesn't even, it mentions um, 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 Isaac yes. and not Ishmael. Yes, it says uh, yes. Israel. Agreeing yes. with Genesis 17. See, so right. we can get Okay, to so we've established, yes, of course. So we've established the gospel quite clearly in, yes. in the Old Testament, the prophecies yes. of the gospel, of the coming of the Messiah. Yes. Because remember, that's what the Old Testament is, what yes. they call types and shadows. Yes. So the prophecies of the coming Messiah, we see it fulfilled in the New Testament, yes. in the mouth of Jesus, in the words of Jesus himself. Yes. And then he hands over that gospel to his disciples, remember? That's why I looked at the eyewitnesses. These are the eyewitnesses, the original 12. And it clearly says in Acts that God commissioned us you mean to be witnesses unto him of the resurrection and in Acts chapter 10 I believe it says it says quite clearly that he didn't after Jesus resurrection he did not reveal himself to all people but those specially selected of God yes. to be his eyewitnesses yes. remember the 12 the 12, the 12 are his eyewitnesses and after Jesus' resurrection he confirms that he confirmed himself in the Old Testament and even in Saint John 15 he said that you will be my witnesses because you've been with me from the beginning these are the eyewitnesses yes but so Jesus is endorsing the disciples so this so they did not only are they witnesses but they're witnesses ordained by Jesus himself remember in Genesis 15 doesn't matter about the verse but he says sorry Genesis John 15, 15. Uh, John he said 15. that you were with me from the beginning so therefore you're my eyewitnesses and then in 15 um, Paul again remember there's the women too you know at oh, the end at the end of the ultimate chapters at the end of every penultimate chapter of the gospel so Matthew chapter 16 Math, sorry Matthew 27 yeah Mark 15 John chapter 20 and Luke 23 at the last, the second to last chapter of all of the gospels have the eyewitnesses the women were the first interestingly enough now I find the women very interesting because that would have been the biggest blunder the Bible could have made 
remember in first century Judaism women were worthless more like the status they've been left in in the Quran permanently shall, shall I mention one of the yeah. amazing witnesses I liked yeah and this was after Jesus was crucified yeah and it, it goes up and when the centurion where are we reading from um, and this is uh, Matthew chapter 27 verse yeah. 54 yes yeah, now that's when right. the centurion yeah. and they that were with him that's watching that. Jesus yeah. saw the earthquake and those things that which yeah. were done they feared greatly saying truly this was the that's son right. of God I so we yes <laughs> and this is a centurion this is a guy that believes in these right. crazy Roman gods of war yes he has nothing to do with Christianity that's nothing right. at all he was the one that probably speared the Lord uh, at the end of the crucifixion yes, yes. to ensure that the you know he, yeah, had, that he was uh, gone. dead, he was dead. dead. yeah uh, um, so we've given all the witnesses yeah. according to I mean our brother Hudson has yeah. led this uh, um, this um, challenge against Amadi that's uh, combat book one of it the crucifixion yeah. or fiction crucifixion so or crucifixion. now we've seen the prophet Isaiah and many other prophets like David talk about this um, actually given the um, mm. the prophecy of the crucifixion mm. we've seen Jesus explain it we've seen the disciples um, there's, you can check online to see Josephus talking about Jesus mm. um, there's other Cornelius, Tacitus, Cornelius, the Cornelius, Thallus, yes. the Lucian, um, the, the Babylonian Talmuds we know that Pontius Pilate existed yes. these are all recorded things so there's enough witnesses I think yes. we've given yes, yes. Um, there's lots so, of witnesses so what would you like to right. do should well, we go into our conclusion yes or go into our more? conclusion because okay. our subject was what is the gospel yes. and we presented what the gospel was from the Old Testament yes. in a nutshell in let's a do nutshell. this actually my last one because okay. this is the gospel in a nutshell go to Matthew this is the answer to the question what is the gospel and this is the answer in a nutshell Matthew sorry um, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4 moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of that all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. One. According to the scriptures. Two. And that he was buried. Three. and rose again from the dead Four. on the third day if according like. to the scriptures That's right. and that he was seen of Cyphus then of the twelve That's right. so that's the witnesses that's right. those are the witnesses and that he was seen above five. seen of above five hundred brethren at five once hundred. five hundred at once five hundred of whom the greater part remain unto this present at the time but some are fallen asleep. That's right. So at this time that this proclamation yes. and this was written, yes. there were 500 witnesses, 500, the disciples, 12, 12 and, Paul, and Paul. That's a total just there alone of 513, not to mention the ones we went through for the last hour. Fantastic. Amen. Uh, that's amen. The, so that's the answer to the question. What is the gospel? It's there in a nutshell, that Jesus died, was buried, resurrected for our sins. So to be clear, I've answered Mr. D that questions. I've called our witnesses, even though Islam and Mr. D that is making it clear that they don't intend to call any witnesses. I'll recap again, quote, Mr. D that the Muslims believe this categorical Quranic statement, that is Surah 4157 to be from God. Hence the Muslim asks no questions and seeks no proof. So Islam asks no questions and seeks no proof from the great Ahmed Didat, who most of the Dawah team, you know, come under. You know, they're his inspiration. And Mr. Dida is saying that we ask no questions and seek no proof. And ask for us to call witnesses, we've called other witnesses. Well, I've certainly, you know? you've certainly asked yes. questions yes. and you've sought proof. Yes. And you've answered the question yes. and you've with scripture you've given the proof so yes the evidence to back the claim yes but i would like to ask you one question sure. and i would hope that we can bring the conclusion mm -hmm. forward from this now this question is why would people want to pervert the gospel and not believe in this testimony and in because they said there's no testimony mm. of this mm. why would they go against the um, evidence well one thing well interesting this well the scripture says that those that are in darkness don't like to come to light okay I'm paraphrasing here but okay. the scripture says in John that those that are in darkness in other words darkness doesn't like light because light reveals darkness it reveals sin it reveals filth it reveals dirt it reveals muck so or, he says that those that are in darkness don't like to come to light unless their evil deeds are revealed. I also put it more sinister. Yeah. I believe mm. those people are trying to send you to the eternal damnation. Yes. And I think that Romans chapter 10, and I love saying this because it's important, mm. because this was what the message of the gospel is. 
and it's from Romans chapter 10 verses 8 mm. to I would say 17 yeah. should we conclude yeah. with this yes would Con you like to read it or yeah. uh, please uh, brother Hudson because this was really sure. your effort and which was really uh, done in good concise manner yeah. and essential and it's uh, Romans chapter 10 verses 8 to 17 but what saith the scripture but what saith it the word is near thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus amen, amen. and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead amen, amen. thou shalt be saved amen. amen for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed amen, amen. for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whatsoever, for whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says who has believed our report amen 17 and last so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God amen and this is why the mission is very essential of what we need to do I'd like to thank you brother Hudson for really clarifying this statement because I was at first, before we came up to this, I was saying gospel of salvation. Mm, mm. Well, you brought the gospel of salvation. Yes. You brought it in its entirety. And, and still listen, answering Ahmed question. And you're still answering Ahmed so we didn't that lose the gospel. Question. We didn't lose the gospel. Well, you stuck. And this is why you, we call on our Christian brothers. Please pick up the good word. Yes. And read and understand so that you can be also deliverers of the word. Yes. Like our brother Hudson. And even in the light of refuting Islam, still yes. make the gospel present. That's make what the Christian gospel present. Do. Now, we see a lot of comments on Soko Films, and I'm really happy, and I thank uh, yes. JC for joining us on this mission continuously to ensure that we get the message across. across. Brothers like, uh, and we should give um, some yeah, clarity uh, to uh, people like Bob, yeah. that oh, does yeah. so much hard right. work, Bob the Builder. Yes. Um, That's right. Um, Brother Paperboy. Paperboy. Yes. Uh, we, we have a lot of adoration for our Christian Absolutely. brothers here. That they persevere trying to wake up the Muslims from this deception. They don't want you to hear the gospel. And we have to ensure that you seek the knowledge yourself. We read your Quran. We understand your narrative. We're not ignorant of it, but you're totally ignorant of our narrative. You have no understanding. And we're trying to bring an understanding. But you Christians that do comment, don't only laugh at these guys. Mm. Please try and enlighten yes. them. Put That's scripture right. on the comments. That's right. Let them see the scripture. Even the scripture them. that we've used now, as yes. far as you can, put some of them up. Yeah, put some it's of them up. Those who are technically, you know, savvy. Savvy. You know, put them up. Let the word yeah. go out. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. I'd like to bless you and thank yeah. you, Brother Hudson. And I'd like to thank you too. Uh, for always go. I'd like to bless yeah. all the members of the audience. Soko Films, may God give you enlightenment yes, and direction and and i would sorry i would also like to thank those christian preachers that are just preaching really don't engage with islam but every single week they just preach the gospel yes. i've seen them they, they stand it's mostly yes. them guys that are standing on high ladders yes. they don't really engage with muslims and they're just determined to preach the gospel a shout out to them as well i'd like to also just, you know, make yeah. a mention to those in the video with shamsi i was actually disappointed with the video i wanted it to be more intellectual mm. because i have a lot more repertoire than just to you know slang matches but well, sometimes we have to be forceful. We're facing the spirit of the Antichrist. The devil is a deceiver. And there's a time that you need to be forceful and so that we will not stand for this um, deception. Mm. We will stake, make a challenge. And if we need to speak and raise our voice to challenge, because they are sending people to the eternal damnation. I'd like to also thank the audience, even the critics, and everyone that gets involved in watching the videos, because we ask for the blessings of our Lord Jesus Christ to be upon you because we are here to give you the word and encourage you to strengthen your faith. The faith is, um, the word of God is not only for unbelievers, it's for the believers, to strengthen your faith. And this is what our mission is. Yes. If we're not delivering the word of God on the Sabbath, what are we here for? That's right. We're, we're not. God, our salvation is paid for by the Lord. I'm saved. I, I sleep in peace each night. I know that I'll be with my Lord and Savior. It's that belief and knowing that God has done so much that encourages me to come here. But I also know about the religions that are not. 
there are other people, pagans, Wiccans, uh, people of other faiths that are not the right way. You're following the doctrine of devils. Mm. It's there in our Bible. Those are doctrines of devils. Yes, if you're there's not a lot the... of other groups as well, isn't it? Yes. Picking a false gospel. That's... In time, all being well, we can look at some of those areas as well. And atheists. Mm. So we call on you to repentance. Lukewarm Christians, the Lord is merciful and forgiving. Blessed be our Lord, who will accept your repentance. It's time to repent. Amen. God bless you all. And God, and God bless, bless you. And please pray for our Christian brothers, yes. all of us. Yes, all of to us. To improve. And God bless soccer team and JC. And JC. I don't smile a lot, but JC makes me smile sometimes. <laughs> he always Thank makes you. me smile. He's yeah. an amicable Thank you, guy. Yeah. God bless. Watch the adverts God and bless. support the. Uh, and keep patron. praying for us. Yes. And, and thank you for your comments, both good and bad, or positive and negative, yes. and everything in between. God and bless. those of you Muslims that do have questions, please challenge us and we'll try and enlighten yes. you. Yes, in the comment section. Yes, yes. in the comment, in the comment section. section. And again, I, I ask if you can and you're technically savvy, I know a guy that can do it in five minutes. Put up some of the scriptures so that people can read them. I'm going to mention. Yeah. Four names, four Muslim names, they're trolls online. Fay Y is one. I see him on all so called uh, okay. videos. A oh, Abrams, yes. right, Syed yeah. F11, who is also here, yeah. who is called um, yeah. uh, Yah Yaha, Yahya, yeah, or mm. whatever. Yeah. Um, which are the AA? Faris oh, Faris. Right. Yes, right. I notice you guys. Brothers, wake mm. up. Oh. You're doing the devil's work. You are doing the devil's work. Wake up. Don't joke around. This is not a joke. Allah is not God, Allah is Satan. And Muhammad is a false prophet. I keep it simple with you. Wake up. It's time to repent. Listen to the word of God. Read the epistle of John. It's very simple. And thank you again for those that particularly, you know, um, point, point out so, both good and bad points where they give me some advice about way to do things and way not to do things. I appreciate it. I want you to know that I'm reading your comments and thank you for them. And Brother Kane, you are not here it's today, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you for the support. Uh, Brother Kane has been doing a, a, um, a WhatsApp group. Okay. A Christian yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yes. And, um, yes, Brother Kane. He said yes. he'd be here later. Brother Kane, uh, God bless you. And yes. thank you for always encouraging. Yes. And all the other brothers and like Bob. The, and for the group. Yeah. Brother H. Bob, yeah, the DCCI team. DCCI, all them guys, yeah, Daniel and Godwin's and Hatton. Hatton. Brother Bob. H as well, he's good, the guy with the, yeah. And um, there's a few other guys, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank God you bless. very much. God bless. God bless.